We're grateful to have you out here tonight again. And join those who join us on live stream. We're, pleas we're very pleased with your presence also. This is going to be our 10th uh, message of the New Covenant. The old cannot be merged with the new. Now this is a critical subject and I do want to do it justice here because this is not generally known in the Christian world. And historically, it's been kind of a blind spot throughout history. And it, even beginning in the beginning of the church, it was a blind spot. Paul, Paul dealt, that's why de, Paul dealt with this so extensively. So you see, this is a this is a troublesome area, and you you troublesome area, and, and it just doesn't require a little education to kind of tune you up on. It's it's a deeper thing than that. And I want to uh, do my best to make this clear. Now there are, uh, we're talking about things that are classified by God. Now we're, that's what we're talking about. Things there are divinely defined categories that can't be mixed. I'll name a few of them. You're familiar with them. You can probably think of more. Holy and profane. All right, you can't you can't combine those. Heaven and earth. You can't combine that. Sin and righteousness. Talking about things that cannot be merged. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. <laughs> Clean and unclean. Light and darkness. Old and new. Law and grace. Flesh and glory. Life and death. So you can't, mm -hmm. you can't combine any of those. And you can't live part-time in one category and part-time in the other category. There's a clean division between these things. And you've got at all time to avoid what is, what is cannot be merged with the new. Now that you heard the text tonight, the statement was made. Words of Jesus. No man, which means this is, uh, you should really be able to figure this out without there having to be an extensive word said about it. No man put a piece of new cloth onto an old garment. For that which is put in it to fill up taketh from the garment, as Brother Judah pointed out, makes the hole larger, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine in old bottles, else the bottles break. And the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish, and they put new wine into new bottles, then both are preserved. One right, gospel writer says, you lost the wine, you lost the bottle too. Now there was an occasion, what occasion Jesus making this statement? And here's, here's what occasion, it is in, Matthew 9, 14. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? That occasion this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was Jesus' answer. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 gives you the first part of it. Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast. Then he, then he cites our text. <laughs> now, if you could, uh, that would be easy to solve if you could make a way for the bridegroom to be there all the time. They, they wouldn't fast, see. 
you've got to see that that is what Jesus did. The president, presence of the bridegroom produced a different environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to try and take fasting hmm. and impose it into that environment is like putting a new garment on a new patch on an old garment right. uh -huh. mm -hmm. or new wine in old bottles. Yeah. Amen. This won't work. Mm -hmm. You should know that. If you... If you have walked in the Spirit and you have walked with God, you know that rules are offensive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you're walking with Jesus. Yeah, they almost are like an insult. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. When the bridegroom was taken, Jesus said, they, would, they were going to lament. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. John 16, 20, you know, the night of his, eve of his betrayal, he said, I say to you, you shall weep and lament. He was going to be going away. You shall weep and lament. But the world shall rejoice and ye shall be far sorrowful. But, remember, the bridegroom is present. It changes the whole situation. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And that's when he rose from the dead and then he was with his mm -hmm. disciples forever. The reason the old cannot contain the new is because it's incompatible. It, you can't homogenize it. It can't take place. The law was weak through the flesh, so you can't take something weak and merge it with the new covenant. It doesn't say we were weak. It says the law was weak mm -hmm. because of us. Yeah. And I want to say this again so that we don't develop the habit of saying we couldn't keep the law. Mm -hmm. The way to say it is we didn't keep the law. Mm -hmm. There's a big mm -hmm. difference now. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that we didn't implies that we couldn't. See, it? So, that, so that's the way it's... Mm -hmm. The law was weak through the flesh... It can in no way be merged mm -hmm. and joined to the new covenant. Roman Catholic theology says that the new covenant is appended mm -hmm. to the old covenant. It's an extension of it. Presbyterian theology says the same thing. The, old, new, the new covenant was appended to the old covenant. And some of the ancient reformers, they were, this area was a cloudy to them. I don't criticize them because of it, because they were coming out of a very dark, dark background. But this is incompatible. You've got to really, you've got to really see that. A, a system relying on human, a system relying on human response can't contain newness of life. Amen. You can't fit newness of life. into something that depends upon human response. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, newness of life comes from God. Yes, and you can't take what comes from God and pour it into what centers in man. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll break it asunder. Yeah. Can't be done. A person living by the law, who is a Christ, professed Christian and living by the law, he ends up worse than he was before. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of that's the meaning of this parable here. Well, you you've got to see this. If you take a person who's in Christ and you try and make the gospel like a patch, mm -hmm. his life will get worse. Yeah. That's why recovery programs have to have their, like, they keep on going. That, that's why. Mm -hmm. The person gets worse, it gets more callous, more hardened, more sorrowful, more regretful. It will not work. The rent will become worse. See? So the new is too, the new is too potent to fit into a system. 
is too potent. Yeah. Now, for some of us, it took a while. It took a while to see this, but once you see this, you got to hang on to it because there's a lot of teaching that try try and talk you out of this, try and get you back into a routine. See, a routine or a discipline can't take much pressure. That's why they it it promotes tolerance and patience. You know, it's going to take a while before they get their lives straightened out, and that, that's why all that that's why all that is said. Because it's a system can't take pressure, but newness of life can. It doesn't make any difference whether you're a, a newly born or whether you've been in Christ for a long time, the pressure's on to grow up. That's right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't let up. Doesn't stop. Now, I've been in Christ for 70, 70, 71 years. And the pressures, I feel this pressure daily. Mm -hmm. Grow up. Be strong. Mm -hmm. Don't faint. Mm -hmm. Don't cave in. Mm -hmm. Newness of life puts the pressure on. Believe me, you, you, if you're in Christ, you felt this. You know, there's a total discontent with being idle or yeah. sluggardly or yeah. not advancing. See, but yeah. a system can't take that. This is one of the areas that uh, we personally here have been criticized on. Yeah. Yeah. Been criticized because it, they think we're law, law binders. We're grace binders. Grace teaches you to die on godliness and worldly lust. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now you pre preach grace, the pressure's put on, see? Yeah, right. But newness of life can take it. Yeah. Amen. It can take it and move on with, it, with this pressure. That doesn't let up. Why? Because you're in a hostile environment. You're in a body that's yeah. decaying. You've got an old nature that's lingering with you. You've got a devil that's sounding. You've got demons that are provoking you to believe certain do false doctrines. It's, you've got you. So your pressure's got to be on. But only newness of life can take it, can take it. See, the law was actually made for weak people. So if you got weak people, if that if that's what you've got mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the law, yeah. the law is made for those kind of people. Here's how the scripture puts it. First Timothy one nine, knowing this, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So someone says, We've been made righteous, but we gotta have this system. Mm system is it made for a righteous man. Yeah, amen. If this is God's God's system, now if, if God if this is set of God's law, yeah. do you really think there's any human law that's exempt from this? Hmm. This is true of God's law. The law is not made for a righteous man, mm -hmm. but for the lawless and the disobedient, <coughs> for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. And... Now, how God's going to deal with the person that confronted these kind of people and developed a system of recovery, I don't know, but he is going to deal with it. The law was never made, not any law, not any law. Not God's law or any law was ever made to shape a person up. It was made to convict them. Yeah. Amen. And that's why people that sin to the law. Yeah. It's a schoolmaster. You've got to be convicted of sin because you can't repent until you're convicted. Amen. And the thing that sinners have to do is not recover, it's repent. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Repent sets recovery in motion. As you know already. Now in Christ Jesus, see, we're not described as lawless and disobedient and so forth. 
Instead, we're described as washed and sanctified and justified. We're, we admit we were in that category when Jesus found us. We were in that category, but we're not in that category. Yeah, and a person that teaches you to say you are in that category, this person is not from God. God didn't send this person. I don't care who it is or how venerated he is or how far along in Christian religion he is or how big of a pastor he is. Any person that teaches the people of God that they're still enslaved to sin, this is the devil's minister. Mm -hmm. The devil sent him Mm -hmm. and the devil sustained him. What you are in Christ, you are washed, you are sanctified, and you are justified. The prison doors are off, and you can get up and walk out a free person. Jesus said, that's what I've been sent to announce. I've been here to announce liberty to the captives. That's what Jesus did. So any person who wants out from sin can get out. Now that we're not saying that it's like duck soup, <laughs> yeah. but if you make your move, God will enable you Amen. to get out of that prison cell. And some of God's people are in prison cells. Mm-hmm. They're imprisoned. And if they listen to these merchants, falsity merchants, they'll think this is common. That there's a place in Christ for remaining in sin even though he delivered you from it. But this is not true. This is emphatically not true. In Christ Jesus, there is divine enablement. We don't need help from man's wisdom. We don't need it. We already have help. The grace of God that brings salvation. That grace. That grace. Teaches us to deny, yeah. means reject ungodliness and worldly lusts, and live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Mm-hmm. That's what these other methodologies pretend to be teaching people. Yeah. We've already got a teacher. Mm-hmm. The grace of God teaches this re- real recovery. And not only just recovery, it depowers sin. Yes. It teaches people to reject all ungodliness and worldly lusts. And it, the Holy Spirit leads us to mortify the deeds of the body. Romans 8.13. That's talking about expressions of sin. The Holy Spirit leads a person to stifle the expression of sin. I don't know of anyone who is will stand and give a resounding testimony that they have finally achieved perfection in this area. But I do know that anyone that's made progress, they've made it because the Holy Spirit has led them and they followed the Spirit and walked in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us, direct us in putting to death the deeds of the body. Why? Because the law couldn't do that. And talk about threats. I mean, if threats could do it, read the threats of the law. In Deuteronomy 28, there's about 56 verses of threats. Stand your hair on end when you read about them. Hmm? So if threats would do it, the law could do it, but threats wouldn't won't do it. These cannot be put, the teaching of grace... The leading of the Spirit cannot be put into a system created by men. Now, men may tell you they can. They say, if you just follow the system, the Holy Spirit will work with this. No, the Holy Spirit works with only God's system. The Holy Spirit doesn't work with what men have concocted. Men are the problem area. They're not the answer area. They're the problem area. Men's what caused this whole dilemma. We're not going to them for a solution. If law works, any law, then there'd be no place sought for a new covenant. Mm -hmm. 
because that's what the scripture says in Hebrews 8, 7. If the first covenant had been faultless, mm -hmm. and remember Romans 8, 3 said it was weak through the flesh, mm -hmm. then no place would have been sought for a second. So if, if this was the way to correct human humanity mm -hmm. was through law or discipline or system or routine, if this was the way, we would never have had a new covenant in the first place. Amen. That's the teaching of Scripture. Now let's look at some of the requirements of the new covenant, and you will see that they are too difficult for, the, for a system of law. You don't grow out of sin. You grow into Jesus. Yeah, amen. You got it? Uh -huh. It's a technical point, but you got to see this. You don't grow out of sin. You grow into Jesus. Yeah. Because in him there is no sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look what the law, what, what God requires, and you'll see that it's too challenging for sin, for law. Abstain, this is 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain mm -hmm. from all appearance of evil. If it even looks evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, you, now you can't answer that. You can't fulfill that by a law. Right. You can't develop a system that will teach a person to abstain from what looks like it's evil. Yeah. If it just looks like it's evil. Don't. No. Stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Grace will teach you how to do that. New Covenant makes provision for you to do that, but law doesn't. Law can't handle it. It's too aggressive. How about 2 Corinthians 7, 1? Having these promises, brethren, let's perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. All right, how are you going to perfect holiness by a system? See, a, the best a system can do is work on reducing the amount of sin you commit. Mm -hmm. That's the best a system can do. A system can't give you a hand to take hold of, of the promises of God. You can yeah. only work at trying to reduce the number of times you sin. Mm -hmm. That's the most the human system can do. It can't do anymore, and it does a lousy job at that. Mm -hmm. But we're to perfect holiness. Yeah. Not, just get, not just get rid of the transgression, but to partake of the holiness of God. See, it, see this can't be done by a system of law. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. See, there is no routine that can lead a person to do that. You can sit in a classroom to now to the time you're 80 years old, and there's no class that can teach you how to do that. That's a determination made in a heart that's been purified by faith. That's a determination fulfilled by someone who's heard about the exceeding riches that's, that's reserved for God's people. But this has to be done. See, in a system, what the system requires doesn't have to be done. It, it ought to be done, and you ought to try and do it, but that's good enough for a system. But it, this isn't good enough for God. The affection has to be yeah. set on things above. Abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. Uh -huh. How do you do that? In the position of a stranger and a pilgrim, as strangers and pilgrims in the earth, all right, a system can't make you a stranger or a pilgrim. No routine, no law of people, no study course can make you a stranger and a pilgrim. But grace can. Grace can make you a stranger and a pilgrim. Put to death the deeds of the body? No, no system can do that. See, the old and the new cannot be blended. That's why the promises of the Old Covenant were all, without exception, temporal. All of them were. From Abraham on. Abraham land the people. Under the law, all the promises were temporal. Bless your family, bless your seed, bless your crops, bless your animals, and so forth. They were all temporal. Why? That's as much as you can get in the flesh. That's as much as you can get. But believe me when I tell you, you've got to get more than that if you're going to dwell forever in the house of the Lord. You've got to be made a partaker 
yeah. of Christ and a partaker of the divine nature. Something from heaven has got to get into you, mm. namely the Holy Spirit. Amen. The new covenant, when it began, that's what made the old covenant old. It wasn't old to that point. That's right. As long as, uh, until Jesus, until John the Baptist, the old covenant wasn't old. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even first. It was the yeah, that's right. covenant. Mm -hmm. Now Romans, uh, Hebrews 8.13 tells us this, that at the point the new commenced, that's the point at which the old became old. In it he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Mm -hmm. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. That is, it didn't, in the minds of men it just didn't disappear. If you're familiar with scripture, you know that the early church had difficulty with this. The old covenant is waxing old, see it was, de it was decaying, de in a death gasp, so to speak, passing away. And yet people are clamoring, trying to hang on to it, but it couldn't, it couldn't sustain them. Because as soon as the new came as a covenant, the old was obviated. It even sustained less than any supposed to sustain it did before. The priesthood, even the priesthood changed. Because the law changed, because the priesthood changed, the law had to change. As soon as there was a different kind of high priest, there had to be a different kind of law. This is how it worked. Because the first priest presumed sin. It's a presumption. Yeah. Sin. That's why he was a priest. His total priesthood had to do with dealing with sin. Mm -hmm. The high priest under the law did not confer any righteousness on the people. Yeah. He didn't pray down great benefits from heaven upon the people. He dealt with sin, sacrifices for sin. That's what he did. Hebrews 7, 12 announces this. For the priesthood being changed, see the high priest, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. So we got a different kind of pre-high priest. We got to have a different kind of a law. For he of whom these things were spoken pertains to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance to the altar. So the, Jesus of the tribe of Judah. So this proves he was a priest of a different order, because mm -hmm. yeah. he's from a different tribe, not Levi, but Judah. It is evident our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Why did Jesus, why as a priest did Jesus spring out of Judah? because he was going to be doing a different kind of work. Yeah. The priesthood being changed, we had, we could, he can't be a high priest under the law. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we dedicate this, of course, to the Sabbatarians and to those that Jewish roots movement mm -hmm. that are trying to restore the Jewish roots. Jesus can't function under a Jewish system. He's not qualified. Uh -huh. He's not qualified to function under the law. The law was clear. He has to be from the tribe of Levi. Yeah. Jesus is not from the tribe of Levi, so it'd be unlawful for him to function under the law, which stands for all systems. That's for all systems. Jesus did what the law couldn't do. What the law could not do, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. See, what the law, the law couldn't do it, so we had to have a different priest who could do it. Yeah. The different priest meant we had to have a different law because the new priest couldn't work under the old system. Isn't that good? Isn't that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's good to know. See, the new covenant is a better, better covenant established on better promises, Hebrews 8, 6. As for the old, it's ready to vanish away. It served its purpose, in other words, as a covenant. 
As a schoolmaster to lead people to Christ, it's still there. As a definition of sin, it's still there, but it can't do anything about sin, and it can't do anything after you come to Jesus. It, that ends the law's ministry. It can't do anything after that. The glory of the first covenant was done away, as 2 Corinthians 3, 7 states. You cannot take the sayings of Jesus or the sayings of the apostles' doctrine and pour them into the old wine skin of law or some human methodology. You can't, like for instance, develop a system of recovery and then make it work by the Beatitudes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. I know this is offensive to some people, but so be it. Mm -hmm. The things of Christ will not fit into. You yeah. can't sanctify a law system by what Jesus said or what the apostles said or any principle of Scripture. Uh -huh. You can't do it. It won't work because God's truth is not made to function that way. <clears throat> in the New Covenant, the laws of God are written upon the heart and put into the mind, which never could happen under the law. See, the law could never get that done. There was this fundamental enmity between God and man that wasn't resolved. But it's be, it is resolved, in Christ it is resolved. So the reason for all law and routine and empty ceremony, the reason for it is a variance exists between God and man. That's the reason for all of it. So you might say, well, what we're trying to do is get people to get control of their life. <laughs> that's a low view of variance between God and man. See, that's, a, that's not really dealing with the problem at, at the root root level. It's just not that life is out of control. It's a little bit deeper than that. It's that the person is hostile against God. Yeah, There's enmity between God and men. That's why they don't have the power yeah. to cease their sin. Uh -huh. And if God's law can't correct that, you may be sure man can't come up with one that, yes. that will. So I um, I leave those few thoughts with you. I If I hope they're not new to you, but if they are, you just have to spend some time thinking about it. I can see, uh, brethren, that this thing of newness of life is a hazy area yeah. uh -huh. to almost all professing Christians. Uh -huh. Get to talking about newness of life and your People don't understand what that means. They think it means a new kind of life. That's what I think it means. It's not a new kind of life. It's new life. Be, where there was death. Yeah. Uh -huh. where there was, it's not that we had an old life. <laughs> we were dead. That's right, yeah. We were dead. Yeah. Brother Gene has our uh -huh. exhortation yeah. tonight.